Okay, good morning, everybody. Thanks for thanks for coming. Thanks for logging in on Zoom. <laughs> so um, today we're going to talk about open houses. So as you guys know, you probably see my emails that come out probably every week and towards the end of the week where there's uh, some of our listing agents or just agents that have listings that don't have time to do hold an open house or they might have multiple listings and they're requesting anyone that has time to hold their open house, right? Any of the, our agents here in the office. So um, for those of you that are newer that would probably like to take them up on their offers but don't know what to do, um, one of the things I recommend is maybe sitting in with someone else on an open house, whatever I do, sir. So what you can do is go on the MLS, look for our listings, see if anyone has an open house on the weekend, and then call them up, say, hey, do you mind if I sit the open house with you, right? So you can learn to see what they're doing. But also, we do this class just to give you an idea of how to prepare for the open house, uh, what you need to do before or during, what kind of questions to ask, like interactions with the client, with the potential customers or buyers. So, um, this is what we're going to do. What are you going to learn? Preparation, just like I said. Uh, what are you going to do on the day of the open house? Uh, buyer potential seller interaction. And important, most importantly, safety. Sometimes you're going to be out in an open house somewhere in Hammett or Riverside or something in the middle of nowhere. And you're going to be all alone. And you got to remember that safety is important. So we'll talk about that. <clears throat> so, in real estate, an open house is a scheduled time when a house or other dwelling is designated to be available for viewing for potential buyers. You guys all know what an open house is, right? And it's open to the public. Usually, the owners or renters vacate the house when the broker holds an open house. So, whether the owner lives there or whether it's a rental that's that uh, an investor owns and they're, they're putting it on the market, you want the house to be vacant. I mean, Empty. You don't want anyone there, right? Any of the, the occupants uh, there. Um, an example is I had a duplex listed uh, got a few years back, and the one of the, one of the occupants, one of the tenants, she was she complained to me as a listing agent. Oh, the, the landlord doesn't fix anything, and oh look, he hasn't done this, and I've asked him to do this, and so. When uh, we had, it wasn't even an open house. It was the buyer's agent, we accepted an offer, coming through with their inspector. And she was there. So I asked her just to wait outside. But as soon as they came in, she's telling the inspector and the other agent, oh, look, this needs to be fixed. And this needs to be fixed. And it's like, oh, my God. So like, and, and, and so I had to tell her, hey, you can't say this. If you want, if you want them to fix it, you're going to have a new landlord. They're going to be happy to fix everything. If this guy's not fixing it, let the guy do his job. Let him inspect the property and do what he's, you know, what he's going to do. It's not your job to tell the potential buyer what is wrong with the house. You're not the owner of the property. So, but she volunteered it. They didn't ask her, hey, you know, she just volunteered the information. So these are the reasons why you want to keep the, the owner or the renter out of the house, right, for these uh, situations. On some occasions, it might be helpful, right? So there was another... Uh, open house that I held for uh, a friend, uh, agent that I have. Uh, I think it was in La Habra or something, and or Brea. And the owner of the of the property asked me, "Hey, do you mind if I if I hang out after, like when I come back after church?" So I'm holding the open house. <clears throat> then he showed up after church, and he was in his church, you know, attire, which looked like a realtor, right? So you dressed up all slacks, dress shirt. And this guy's he's a police officer, so he's like, and he's probably like six foot four, not as tall as you are. <laughs> um, but so, yeah, so it, it, it helped because I'm not all alone there, right? I have someone to talk to during the the, the, the quiet times. And uh, so we're talking and, and stuff, and I already prepared. I had information about the property printed out. I asked the other agent, the listing agent, questions about the property. But who better to answer questions than, than the owner of the property? So as people came to the open house, there were questions I didn't know about. I didn't know how to answer. Like, um, you know, so and I, I, I know the neighborhood. This is a buyer coming through. And I know this model didn't have this, this, this addition. When did, what year did you guys have this addition? I didn't know about that. And so, like, I, I turned it over to him. He's like, oh, yeah. So the addition was added, blah, blah, blah. He didn't say I'm the owner of the house. He just was talking about things that I didn't know about about the property, right? 
and he was there to help out. So he also highlighted a bunch of you know upgrades or certain things about the house that I didn't know. So that was helpful. And he was in no way, you know, in, insinuating you're not doing your job. This is, you know, it's these are honestly there's certain things you're not gonna know about the property that the owner's gonna know. I don't recommend that you do that, have the owner sitting there with you. But this was an example where the owner was sitting there and he was helpful. So let's move on. Any questions on that? Okay, let's move on. So uh, benefits of an open house, it attracts potential buyers, potential buyers for the property, but also potential buyers for you as an agent to work with on other properties potentially. Uh, it'll potentially generate multiple offers. So the more people that come in and see the property at one time, the more they're gonna say, oh, hey, this is, this is a pretty popular property. It looks like a lot of people want this property, right? Because you're gonna see at the open house, there's one couple, you know, sitting over here talking, you're like, oh yeah, we can put this here and that there. And, and then another couple over here talking about measurements and like, oh, you know, and calling their agent. So you see a lot of, a lot of interest. You see the, the buzz around the property. So when other people, potential buyers see that, it, it makes them more excited. Like, oh, I'm not the only one who likes this house. We better hurry. We better submit an offer. So it could uh, generate uh, multiple offers. Uh, so the benefits for listing uh, for a listing agent are it shows us all you're working, you're doing your job, right? Some agents just disappear. They put the listing in the MLS. They don't hold open houses. They don't send any marketing out. They just wait for other agents to look up the property in the MLS and bring their buyers by. I mean, depends on if they're getting what kind of commission they're getting, right? Mm -hmm. You, you get what you pay for it. But so it shows the seller that you're working. You pick up potential buyers. Right? Who doesn't want more buyers, more, more uh, customers? And exposure. If you're the, if you're marketing that particular neighborhood, you have your open sign, open house signs everywhere, probably 20 or 30 around the neighborhood, pointing uh, direction, directing you to the property, and it's got your name on it. Right? The more open houses you hold, the more people are gonna they're gonna see your name, the more they're going to think that you're the agent uh, to call in this neighborhood, right? So preparation for the open house. What do you need before the open house? Open house you sign. definitely need open house signs, right? Uh, schedule professional cleaning service if needed, right? If it's vacant and it needs to be cleaned. Contact and book a staging company if needed, again. So if the owner's living in the property. You probably don't need to stage, it's probably furniture there already. Purchase open house signs if you have not already done so, at least 20 of them. And remember the open house signs should have your name, your DR license number, phone number, and the broker's name. So ahead of myself there. <clears throat> and I'm not sure if I have it on the next slide, but you also need uh, you need the keys to the property, right? So you need to Schedule with the owner. If uh, you don't have a lockbox on the property already, uh, maybe the owner doesn't want one on the property yet. So make sure that you have access to the property. So this is important, MLS. On the MLS, you're gonna post the open house date and the times. Um, and this is important because it might take a couple of days to populate into the other portals, such as Zillow and uh, Realtor.com and other uh, real estate company websites. So I, if you're gonna, if you know you're gonna be doing an open house, I would post it in the MLS no later than Wednesday, maybe even Thursday, if you're cutting it close, to make sure that it shows up on all the, the portals, all the real estate websites or portals. Uh, make sure that you post it on social media. Announce the open house on social media. Email the open house information to, to the, uh, the agents here at the office. You can send me an email um, saying, hey, can you send this out to the office? Open house, Saturday, blah, 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 on this property, from this side of this time, send your clients, right, with, along with the picture. I'll forward that out to the, to the office. And again, schedule it early in the week on the MLS to, to allow it to populate all the, all the websites. Design, friend, and send out open house uh, invitations to the neighborhood. So you're definitely going to want to have property flyers available for people to take home. 
And it's important to have the property flyers at, at the open house because who knows how many properties those buyers are going to see that day, right? And then are, are they going to remember this house? Which one was the house that had the blah, 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 right? That's the one I really like, but I'm not sure. But that's that was my favorite one. But I don't remember what address it was, what property it was. So when you let them walk out with, with the flyer, it's got pictures on it. It's got the address. It's got your contact information. So if the buyers are now working with an agent, they're going to call you and say, hey, we'd like to submit an offer. What's next, right? Or they're going to give it to their agent and say, this is the house we liked. <clears throat> so we want to submit an offer. So make sure you have property flyers. And then, so the open house invitations, you want to probably go, and, and we're, we'll talk about this a little bit later, um, invite the neighborhood, because you never know, there might be someone whose sister wants to move into the neighborhood. Like, hey, let me know next time a property comes up, because we, we like this place, and we want to be close to mom, for whatever the reason is. Um, so some people send out flyers and say, this is a great time to pick your neighbor. Pick your neighbor, meaning... Do you know someone that wants to move into the neighborhood? Let them know. Not in any other uh, 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 fashion like um, fair housing or discrimination type of thing. I'm talking about <laughs> the opposite of people you actually know to live to live in the neighborhood. So I know this is going to go public on YouTube. So just want to make sure that that that's clear. Uh, you can create these flyers on Moxie and Press on on my CD desk. Moxie Press and then Listing Concierge. There's different templates available for you guys to select. Any questions on this? <clears throat> All right. So you can order shoe covers and a flyer stand if needed. Uh, you can contact one of the title companies. Mary's pretty good about doing this uh, with lawyer's title. Um, shoe covers because the owners don't want people shredding through their carpet or their nice hardwood floors. So it's either take off your shoes or put on some shoe covers, also known as booties. Um, and then a the flyer stand, place your flyers in, and then you, it has, a, they usually have a little uh, pocket for your business cards as well on there. You can buy bottled water or other beverages, maybe have some coffee or something there. Um, and you can create just little labels, put them on the water bottle. So if they take them home, they, they're personalized, right? I don't know who's gonna keep a water bottle, but still. You know, the more personalization, the better. Maybe you can get some cookies or pastries or something for people that are coming through. And then some people, uh, well, we'll talk about this later on. All right, so what you want to do is you want to look up, print, and study other listings and comps in the neighborhood. Right? You want to be a pro. You want to be an expert in the neighborhood. So what I want to do beforehand is I want to see what's on the market in this neighborhood. What sold the last couple of months, maybe last one or two months? What's an escrow? Maybe even prior to the open house, go visit a couple of these other listings that are on the market so I can know what they look like inside. Because if a buyer comes through and asks me questions about the neighborhood or about this property, I can say, well, yeah, this is slightly bigger than the one down the street. That one, the pictures make it look bigger, but it's not as big as this, right? So now you know from firsthand experience because you've been there. Uh, plus, you could say, I don't know, um, this one has a bigger yard, or maybe the yard isn't as big here, but it's it's, it's nicer, because I've seen that one, it, it needs a lot of work, and whatever. So now you're speaking from experience, and and you just sound like you know what you're talking about, right? So the more information you have, the more confident you're going to be, or more, more confident you're going to sound. All right? And if a buyer didn't like the house, you can arrange to show them another house, another <laughs> Hey, you don't like this house? There's another house down the street. I can show it to you if you want. You know, we can do it after the open house or maybe tomorrow. You know, what's best for you? So now, on the day of the open house, arrive early. Definitely want to arrive early. So you can address any lockbox lock issues. And again, I, I can't stress this enough. Practice opening lockboxes, okay? You, want, you don't want to look silly in front of your client or, or you know, maybe you're, you, you get there on time. Maybe the, the open house starts at 12 or 1. Let's say 1 o'clock. It, it goes from 1 to 4 or 12 to 4. You show up exactly when it starts because you had trouble putting up all the signs, and now you're at the open house at the property, and you're trying to open it, and there's people waiting. They're like, hey, we, we, we've been waiting for this open house all week. We're excited about it. Now you're sitting there trying to open the lockbox. 
yeah, it's not opening. And you feel rushed because they're pressured, right? So you're just like, oh my God, it's not working. And they're watching this. And, and you're sitting there and struggling with it. So that arrive early because you don't want anybody to see you struggling with this. It gives you it gives you time to get situated, familiarize yourself with the home's features and layout. Um, if you hadn't seen the property before, been to the property before, when, when you arrive early, you get to walk through the property, turn on all the lights, right? Um, look to see where the master bedroom is, where the, you know, everything, right? So you know exactly when a buyer comes through, oh, so, you know, what is, where is the master bedroom located? Oh, let me show you. You walk them exactly to where it's at. You're not like, I think it's over here. <laughs> Let's walk back over here. So familiarize yourself with the home and the features. Yeah, you know that there are certain kind of countertops, that there's certain type of flooring, but maybe there's something that um, the listing agent missed about one of the features that makes the house even better than the, the, uh, the other ones or the competition. So you can put a sign up stating their cameras recording. If there are cameras, make sure you have to have a sign, a sign up saying that there's cameras up for safety reasons. I would also put this up even if there are no cameras. I mean, it's not going to stop somebody, but it could deter someone from doing something bad, right? Door not the surrounding neighbors with open house flyers, postcards, and personal invitations. Maybe you can set, you can, you know, knock around 50 doors around the, the subject property and say, hey, um, I just want to let you know we're having an open house at this property down the street. And we're inviting all the neighbors to come to like a, a early preview of the property. The open house is from one to four, but we're allowing all the neighbors to come and see it from 12 to one. So you're more than welcome to stop by. This is like a special preview just for neighbors. If you know anybody that, that wants to buy, tell them to come down between that time. Oh, there's a guy knocking on the door. So you want to place that same day, that same morning, place the maximum number of open house signs throughout the neighborhood. So if you have 20 of them, put 20 out. If you have 30, put 30 out. So you have to put signs out from every entrance into the neighborhood, not just one entrance, right? So like on the left-hand side, you have a, a, a main, uh, main road. You want to lead people from that main road and then you turn them left and then you turn right and then turn, you know, whatever. But there's also a main road on, on the right side. So you want to lead them in from that side. There might be entrances from each from all four sides. Some of the signs in the middle of the neighborhood might you might not have to like be redundant with them because once you enter from certain areas, you're gonna see those signs already. But you want to bring people in from, from the outside, from all directions. Okay. I put a lot of signs on this presentation for you guys. So, I don't know why this showed up at the bottom here. So, you, you want to have a, a MLS printout of the listing for personal reference, right? So, if somebody walks in and asks you a question about the property you, and you couldn't memorize everything, you at least have that to reference. Oh, the, the property is, you know, 1570 square feet. Oh, yeah, there's, uh, I don't know, two car garage and which is pretty a simple, easy, easy thing to remember, but I don't know, things like um, solar panels or uh, tankless water heater or like other features on the property that you might not remember, but it's good as a reference. You want to print out representation agreements, right? To have them with you that day. You're going to have the open house visitor non-agency disclosure and the property showing representation agreement and the buyer representation and broker compensation agreement. Why all three of those? Because they're going to sign one of them. And we'll talk about that a little bit later in the presentation, uh, what the differences between each one of them. You want to set up the flyers, business cards, any supporting documents, maybe school information, like walking score, things like that. And then have a few buyer guide, guides ready. We have buyer guides on my CV desk in the marketing center that you can print out or use the one that I emailed out to you guys. If you want me to send it to you, I, I can. Um, have a few of those ready. And it talks about working with buyers and what buyers need to know. So 
the different forms. This is the open house visitor non-agency disclosure sign-in form. So with on this form, this is like a sign-in sheet pretty much. So when buyers walk in, you're gonna ask them to please sign in by uh, signing this form. And this is to let them know that you are not representing them, right? If they, if they want to sign this, you ask them, hey, are, are you working with an agent? Yes, I am. Okay, please sign in here and write your agent's name on there. And if they don't know their agent's name, just write your name and your email address, phone number, right? And some are, are going to be hesitant to write their phone number or their email or, or give you the correct email phone number, but just get them to sign it. And this protects you because anything that you tell them um, after signing this, they, they can't come back and sue you because uh, they assume that you were representing them because you were answering questions. Anything that they tell you or that you tell them is for the benefit of the second, <clears throat> not for their benefit. So you're pretty much covering yourself here. Um, so this is probably the one most people are going to sign. And if they don't want to work with you, this is what they're going to sign. And you know what? There's going to be some people that aren't going to want to sign anything. Let them look at the property. I mean, you don't have, they don't have to sign in. But just let them know you can't answer any of their questions. I, I, I may have said this before, but I've had a couple of people um, since we had to start doing this who didn't want to sign in. And I said, okay, it's fine, you can but I can't answer any questions. And they go, fine. Mm -hmm. and the next thing they know, they're asking you a question. Say, you want me to ask the question? You've got to sign in. And then it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they do it in a way that you can't really read the email address properly or they put something in that's fake. But at least it makes them realize that you're, being, you're, you're serious about what you do. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Thank you for that. So they're going to sign in eventually, right? And if they don't, it, that's <clears> fine. <throat> just don't say anything to them. If they have any questions, just tell them to grab a flyer or, or talk to their agent. So that's what this form is, saying that you don't have any type of agency with them. You're not representing them at all. You're representing the seller and that's it. And then the other form is the property showing and representation agreement. This one, when you have it printed out for that open house, on that first line up there um, for property address, you're gonna type in the property address for that property. So this form allows you to represent a buyer for one particular property only or up to three properties. And you're gonna write the address for each one of them. And the representation period is, you know, you can say one month. And then this is how much, Mr. Buyer, you're going to pay me if you submit an offer and it's accepted. But our contract is only for this property. Even though it's for a month, it's only if you come back and you want to submit an offer on this property. If you want to look at other properties or submit offers on other properties, this doesn't bind you to me for, for the whole entire month <clears throat> on any other property but this one. So that's if you're going to represent them for this particular property. And why not, right? So that's what this one is. And the third one is buyer representation broker compensation agreement. This is more of a contract between you and a buyer for pretty much any property, right? In the city, let's say in a particular city. So if we look at B2 here, it's either for counties, let's say Orange County or city, maybe just Irvine or Irvine and Lake Forest or whatever it is. So any properties that they, submit an offer on, and they end up buying within the time frame of A1, your beginning, beginning and ending date. <clears throat> and is it, if it's exclusive, so you got to make sure that you check the box on A2 that says exclusive. If they submit an offer and buy a property, close on a property, you're entitled to a commission, right? So you can also use this as a single property agreement. If you go to B1 and you check the box that says the following specified property, only, so it's one, two, three, mainstream. Now this serves as the other, the, the last form. It'll be the same as this pretty much. So any questions on this? I, I don't have a question, I have a comment. I, I noticed the other day when I was um, posting some stuff on the MLS that the National Association of Realtors has some really good consumer guides tech explaining to consumers what all these forms are for and why they have to exist. Uh, I only saw this the other day. I've actually printed a few of those out in preparation for this weekend. Mm -hmm. So that if somebody is asking, you know, well, I've heard about all these changes and what, why do I have to sign this? 
you can not only explain it, you can also hand the piece of paper and say, look, this is from the National Association of Realtors, it explains to you, it's not us doing this, this is the, you know, the raw net. And I just thought it was a, a useful thing to have in my bank of stuff yeah. that, I, that I take with me. Yeah, that's a good thing to have. But it's also important for you guys to know the difference between, between these forms. So aside from having that explanation to the consumer, you should know what each one of these is for and how to use it and when to use it. So any questions on any of these forms? Anyone at home? Cool. Okay, let's move on. So on the day of the open house, more suggestions, play some background music. Maybe take a Bluetooth speaker with you, that's what I like to do. I like to play Spanish guitar music in the background. It sounds pretty calming. And um, I had uh, someone come into through an open house and say, Oh, this music's way better than the last open house I went to. They were playing like hip hop or something. And you know, I was like, okay, well, it's relaxing, and, you know, inviting. If possible, have a host at the front door, like greeting people and having them sign in and you're in the house and you know, answering questions. Take photos and video of the open house and post it on social media while you're there. Still have for business. Um, set of drinks and cookies that same day, we're gonna provide that. Uh, what I've seen before for some open houses is that they make it like an event. Mm -hmm. They put up a big easy up on the, in the driveway, they set up a table mm -hmm. and that's where people sign in and they have like balloons and stuff like that. So like the whole neighborhood's thinking, the hell's going on there? Mm -hmm. I wanna go check it out. Mm -hmm. So people walk up, right? And, and as people are walking up or driving by, they know exactly where the open house is. Not only that, but the owner of the property is gonna be like, God damn, hey, they're really doing it up. This is not <laughs> what I'm used to, right? It's, and it's pretty cool. And, and what, what you want to do in that situation is you want to have someone sitting at that table under that canopy signing people in, whether it's an assistant, maybe a loan officer, right, that can help, maybe uh, another agent, right, to help you out. So that's a pretty good idea to do during the open house. Let's see. Potential seller interactions or buyer and seller interactions. So I don't know why this thing's not going the order it's supposed to be in. So potential buyer and seller interactions. So the main reason to have an open house is to find the perfect buyer. And it's simply a, buy, a seller's looking for a buyer and a buyer's looking for a home. It's easy, right? It, it can't get easier than that. And keep in mind that your services are on display by both buyers and potential sellers that, that, that walk into the property. So be professional, be courteous to everybody. Don't be a jerk. You know, don't don't uh, don't kick people out of the house because you don't like what they're wearing, or maybe you just I don't know they won't sign. Just be professional, and and, and you never know these might be potential clients of yours, buyers or sellers. So just you're representing Global Banker Platinum Properties also. We don't want to develop that reputation. No? <laughs> <laughs> so ask the buyers if they're working with another agent. And if so, let's see. Sign if they are, then have them sign the open house visitor non-agency disclosure. If if they're not working with another agent and would like for you to answer any questions about the property, they can either sign the property showing representation agreement or the buyer representation of broker compensation agreement, right? And again, write the address in to let them know, hey, this is only for this particular property. You're not tied to me for a month or two months or three months for any other property except for this one. So let them know what the difference is. And it's spelled out right there. This It's for this particular property and it's for this time frame. and you would pay me this, this amount of commission, which we could then probably try to negotiate the seller to pay for it. Can't guarantee it, but we can do that. And they must sign one of the three forms that they'd like to see the property. Again, they don't have to sign. There's no law that says that they have to sign. Now you can stop them from going in if you want to, but what's it gonna hurt for them to look at the property, right? So here's a couple of scripts that you can use at every open house to help you understand <laughs> the reason each visitor is there. 
Hi, my name is Carlos. Welcome. Did you come in today to buy your dream home or to figure out how much your home is worth? So are they a buyer or are they a seller? They're going to say one, one or the other, right? Oh, I'm just browsing, just looking around. Or we're, we're looking in the neighborhood, we're thinking about buy, of buying in the next few months. Or, oh, I own a property down the street and just looking at, you know, just want to check out the, the house, whatever. So that might be them considering selling, right? And looking at the competition. So any questions on this? And you want to, you don't have to use this exact verbiage. Make it your own. Talk like yourself. Here's another script. Hi, my name is Carlos. Welcome. Are you looking to buy a new home? Or are you comparing home values? Right? Now, whether you ask the question at the time of the tour or as you're leaving, it doesn't matter as long as you ask it. You want to know how many buyers came through? How many potential sellers came through? How many looky loose came through? Oh, I just live in the neighborhood. I saw the I like to just walk into open houses. All right, cool. Looky loop. But <clears throat> you still want to be professional. So there's one goal for these scripts to achieve putting them in a visitor, putting the visitor in a buyer or seller column. And that's how you know exactly how to follow up with each one of them, right? If a potential buyer or seller asks to work with you, make sure that you ask that they're working with another agent. Don't forget to do that. And if they've signed with, any, with anything with another agent. So they might say, I'm working with an agent. They don't have a contract signed. They don't have a contract signed. <laughs> if the buyer tells you that they're working with an agent, but they no longer wish to work with that agent, ask them if they sign something, sign a representation agreement with that, with that agent. If a potential buyer is not working with another agent and does not like the house offer, show them another house. That meets the criteria. And that's where you ask them, so what exactly are you looking for? Start writing these things down. So if the buyer is not interested in that property, use your knowledge of the local market, the homes uh, for sale, talk about other properties, and set an appointment right there on the spot. So again, this is where you have your list of available properties. Everything, right? Two bedrooms, three bedrooms, four bedrooms, whatever's on the market in that neighborhood. And maybe they like this neighborhood. So they say, yeah, we want to buy here. And we don't have to have a three bedroom. We can, we can do a two bedroom. Then you know, oh, hey, great. There's a two bedroom on the market. And it's, you know, it's more affordable. Blah, blah, blah. It's closer to whatever school your kids are going to go to, whatever it is. Because you know the, you know the area. And you've driven around the area and... Maybe you know where the, like, going back to the beginning, right, before the open house, drive around the neighborhood, make sure you know where all the parks, the amenities, the pools, the, maybe look on the map to see where the schools are, how far they are, like, like, literally know how many miles there are from the house, or how many blocks away, or how, how long the drive is, or whatever it is, right? So that way you can, you can say, yeah, the, the elementary school is like four blocks from here, it's not very far, or it's half a mile, or, you know, a full mile, whatever it is, but you know, you, you're the expert, right? And it makes you sound more like an expert. If not a house, if not this house, then let's look at another house, right? Potential buyer script. I know a few other homes that are on the market. Would you like to, that, that would like, that would meet your needs. Would you like to see them? In order for me to be able to show you any property, we have to sign a representation agreement. So this is something new that we've added to this to this uh, class or presentation. I'm um, adding the, the, the contracts, the representation agreements, and then adding this into the script. So this is a new requirement for all agents to be able to show properties. So make sure that you, you let them know, hey, if you want me to show you properties, you have to sign an agreement. And you can say, you know, we can make it for a month, we can make it for, what, for a specific city, whatever it is. Whatever makes them comfortable, right? When is the best time for you to see them? I'm free as soon as I'm done here at 4 p.m. or 3 p.m., whatever the open house is. If not, let's get together on day or time. And it's good to give two options. Is Monday better for you or Wednesday? Wednesday, okay, 2 o'clock or 5 o'clock? They're going to pick one. Usually they'll pick one. What's the best phone number or, e or email for you? Contact information, right? 
potential buyer that's just looking. That's great. It's always good to first look and uh, get a sense of the market or the things about the property that you're looking for, things that you dislike. I have a few listings that you might like in the neighborhood or whatever neighborhood it is, as well as other upcoming open houses at once through Main Street, whatever it is. But if it's just someone that's looking, you know, make them feel like, hey, good job that you're going around looking at, at homes to see what they're worth and, you know, window shopping for now, just to familiarize yourself with the pricing, with the types of homes and so forth. Potential seller conversation. How long have you owned your property? Right, so this is if someone says, oh, when you ask them, hey, are you comparing values? Are you looking for a home? They're like, oh, no, we're, we're just looking because we're thinking about selling. Okay, then you follow up with this. How long have you owned your property? So many years. What were you thinking putting your, you're putting your home on the market? Okay. What's the reason you're moving? Do you have time today after my open house to show, to show me your home or would like to schedule a time to meet to discuss how I can help sell your home? Not robotic like this, but just make it your own. But you guys see where we're headed with this, right? Try to get as much information as you can right there and then, and don't rush them. You're, you're, you are holding the open house and people are coming by. You don't have to like say, oh, uh, let me talk to you later. I got to do this. It's like, no, that's a potential seller, right? People are coming through the house. They're going to look at the house, right? No, it's come back to them, but this is another potential listing. So uh, take your time with it. And again, motivation as to why why they're selling, when they have to move by, and so forth. Book the appointment. Now, safety. I think this is the end of it. So, safety is let someone know where you where you're going to be and how long you're going to be there for. Like family, friends, uh, broker in the office. If it's somewhere that's remote, right? But even if it's somewhere close by, anything can happen anywhere. So, let someone know where you're going to be. And for how long? Have another agent or loan officer at the open house with you, like a buddy buddy type of thing. Mm -hmm. Familiarize yourself with all the exits uh, so you can escape safely. See if there's an emergency exit uh, other than the front door. So when you're when you get there early, when you arrive early, you want to know where all the exits are. There's an exit through the back. There's an exit through the garage, right? Maybe out into the garage and then out from there. Maybe you can jump out of the balcony and onto the neighbor's house or whatever it is, right? You have you should know where your escape routes are in case you had to. It sucks that we have to think about those things, but we're not naive. We have to think about those things, right? Because Any, anything can happen. Uh, again, post a sign that implies that there's cameras. Smile on your own camera right as soon as they walk in. They don't know where it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if you see them walk in and they're like, like going like this, looking around, Something's wrong, right? It's on right side. Yeah. Hey, you don't want to sign in, you gotta go. <laughs> it might be a good idea to carry some pepper spray. Right? And just have it with you, maybe have it in your pocket, or you have like your little purse, little satchel purse, whatever it is, that's that easy to reach to somewhere somewhere that where you can just grab it for an emergency. But um, I would recommend that everyone have some of that handy at an open house or showing property. And uh, that's it. Any questions? Maybe buy a pepper spray. You can get them at Big Five, oh, uh, any uh, sporting goods stores, mm -hmm. gun stores. Another thing is um, you can apply for your uh, uh, CCW, mm -hmm. carry concealed weapons permit. And because you're realtors, and considering this is if you have a clean background, you have no criminal history, um, <clears throat> they usually approved realtors right away. What? Did so you, want? you still have to go through the training and, okay. and the application and the background check and they do your, uh, your uh, uh, they check your background with the Department of Justice, I think, the FBI, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, so they still check your background and then you still have to apply. You still have to take the safety classes. You still have to pay for everything. But there's a lot of agents that are actually carrying weapons. Yes. That's the yeah. Answer. Yeah, so that's another thing. You'll feel even safer with that, right? But again, you can't be flashing it to everybody either. That's an option that you, a lot of realtors are carrying now. So um, again, they're very friendly with realtors as far as approving 
uh, be the carrier. They want you guys to be safe. Mm -hmm. So. I want taser then. You can carry taser. Really? Yeah. Okay. Just don't go around tasing people for fun. <laughs> and I'm shitless. <laughs> <laughs> no, because then that, that's not concealable. Oh, okay. The mace is going to be more more effective than the uh, the stun gun. But um, question about signage, Carlos. Yeah. I was wondering, uh, what finish do you get on your signage? What finish? Uh huh. I I never have an option. I just order whatever signs they like. When I go to the RESS website, whatever mm -hmm. options they have there, I just pick what one or two of the options. I mean, it's it's a uh, they have the sign. They have how many holes do you want? Do you want them on the corners? Do you want the holes in the middle? Um, and then they'll have like the gloss or like the finish on there as an option as well. I was just wondering if you had a preference on that. No, it's just personal preference. Yeah, gotcha. I think whatever's cheaper. If it's going to cost more, I'm not going to do it because you have to buy a ton of them. True, true. Okay, sounds good. So, Because you still have to remember you have to buy the signposts. Yeah, yeah, the post is pretty much yeah where the, where they get their money too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes, I do. Yes. I checked the um, you know, CCW the price, and it's super expensive. Like, oh, initial application is like thirteen twenty eight. No. Ah huh? no no no. That's cheaper than that. Really? Okay, I already know. But um, okay. If nobody has any questions, <laughs> well, so so what if they ask about where the cameras are? If you just say you're not at where you say. Like if the, if the house didn't have any cameras, and you put the sign out anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You just say I'm not at where you, you can you, you can point it like the TV. Oh, just say it's on the in the TV because a lot of have a lot of TVs have a, a built-in camera. That's true. Or maybe if there's a computer there, it's it's we're recording from that computer. Or mm -hmm. if there's a teddy bear somewhere. You say it's, it's right there in that teddy bear. Even a clock. Yeah, even a clock. Yeah, anything. You can you can just point at anything and see that that's where the camera is. Yeah. I wasn't ready for that, but <laughs> <laughs> pretty much anything can be a camera now. You can say yeah. it's right here on my pin. Yeah. Or the glasses that I'm wearing, they're they're they have cameras on. So yeah. Um actually on the sideboard. I'm the camera. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right? Yeah, yeah. you know. I've seen yeah. amazing. <laughs> so, so again, I would recommend if you're newer, um, if you see that any of our agents are holding an open house, ask them if you can sit in an open house with them just to see how they, everyone's going to do it differently, mm -hmm. right? Um, some people might show up early to set up, some people might not. Um, so if you're going to do an open house for an agent, they might ask you, hey, do you have signs? If not, mm -hmm. you can use my signs. So then you're going to put their signs out, you know, directing people to the house. And... Um, Maybe they'll even offer to put the signs out for you. Hey, I'll put the signs out. You just show up and do the open house. So this can be different scenarios. And then as far as, and this is something that we don't, we've never talked about, but so usually when you do hold an open house for someone, for an agent, any buyers that come through, they're your buyers. The agents don't ask you for a, for a referral fee. They don't ask you to pay them. You're doing them a favor by holding the open house. And they're saying, hey, because you're doing this for me, any buyers that come through, they're yours. But if you're if you're sitting in an open house in their farm area and someone does come in and they're thinking about selling, that's where they're going to be a little more like, hey, if anyone comes in and they, they're talking about selling, you have to refer them to me because this is my neighborhood that, I'm, that I market and I want to get the listing. So that's going to be the only, you know, uh, I guess. I don't want to say that to me yet, actually. Because they probably haven't been in their farm areas. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, so like if, yeah, if, if I'm farming somewhere and I'm allowing me to do an open house and you're using, using my signs and everything and someone walks through and says they want to sell, I, I'm going to want you to tell me who they are and, and so I can reach out, reach out them, to them and uh, hold the open house. I mean, list their property and then I'll let you do the open house, right? But, so pick up any buyers you want, but any, any listing that comes through is going to be to me. So just be ready for that conversation if that, if that happens. Just so you're not surprised or, or wondering, what you know? What do people do in this situation? There might be some agents that'll say, "I haven't, I haven't run across any here in the office," but that'll say, "Any buyers that come through, if you close on it, I want a percentage of it." I don't know how you track that, but mm -hmm. so yeah. So usually, 
any buyers that come through, they're, they're your buyers. So I don't think we've talked about it before, but again, these classes is to talk about the little things yeah, yeah. that you don't normally <laughs> know. Right? That's interesting. Yeah. Any questions on any of those type of scenarios? No? Okay. Cool. All right, everybody. So next week we're going to talk about um, working with the lease, tenants, landlords, um, and all of that. So when you're newer, you're probably going to get uh, tenants as your first clients looking for a place to lease. So I want to make sure you guys understand how to work with them and what you need to do. So we'll see you guys next week on that. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you. Thank you.